Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built. And in this episode, we are continuing to assemble the Al Ferrari, and uh, I think it needs some wheel arch flares. All right, guys, welcome back. And uh, where we left off last week, I did a lot of stuff with the door locks and getting that sort of stuff sorted inside the car. That's all working quite nicely now. Uh, and uh, I sort of started playing with some of the suspension stuff, but there's plenty more to do on that. Uh, I still need to get a few more bits and pieces and uh, I'm waiting on some stuff. So it's just gradually assembling bits and pieces uh, and actually making it much easier to move around because I've got so many bits. One car, when it's pulled apart to every single piece, takes up a whole lot of space. So it's really nice to start consolidating and bolting things back together again. Um, so if you're watching, uh, probably a month or so ago now, I did the uh, paint protection film on the sort of the front end of the car. And like everything, I messed some of it up. Particularly the uh, the bonnet, I, I messed up. That was the big piece that I messed up. And uh, I didn't have enough... Uh, of the paint protection film to cover all the wheel arch flares and stuff like that, particularly the rear flares, if they don't have anything on them, are just gonna cop heaps of stone chips and stuff. Uh, you notice that on uh, Porsche 911s and basically anything that's got a wide body on the back, uh, particularly if you've got wider front tires and wider rear tires, it flicks all the stones up to that spot and uh, it just gets absolutely trashed, which is why uh, a lot of the old Porsche 911s have that uh, that little uh, shark fin plastic thing on, on the back. That's not just for cosmetics, it's actually to protect it from the stones. So I want to uh, keep the the flares yellow, like I painted them. Uh, so that's why I'm doing it with the paint protection film. Uh, there's also some stuff I'm gonna redo on the front because it's not uh, working great. But to start with, let's get that bonnet out and uh, see if we can recover it. Well, that time it went much, much smoother than the first time. I think I was overthinking it the first time, just taking my time, getting the corners down, and then I found just stretching out the middles to, uh, to get it to sit flat. And um, I've also learned that any of the little minor little water bubbles, if there's any little sort of tiny water bubbles in there, it actually sort of boils out of the, uh, the paint protection film. It's actually sort of uh, micro porous or something like that. Basically, it just lets the, uh, the, the moisture will, will come out of it and, uh, and it will breathe and uh, sit nice and flat like the rest of the parts have. So that is looking good. That is a relief. So uh, I'm gonna move this to the side and start looking at the rest of the wheel arch flares.
right, so the wheel arch flares are looking good. I'm quite happy with the result of that, but um, coming back to the front end, this side where I joined the uh, paint protection film, the trouble is because I had to stretch it so much around this corner, uh, I had to stretch it too much. And this, this corner here is okay at best. Um, it's still all puckered inside uh, the headlight bucket there. And on the other side, it's much worse. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually going to remove the center section and uh, and redo this uh, corner and uh, and change the shape of it. So I'm going to keep this outside area and just fix up the uh, the the corner and the stretched area and make it look a little bit better. So uh, I'm going to get out the tape and uh, trim. All right, I'm much happier with the paint protection on the front end. Uh, I went through the reasons for doing it and all that sort of stuff. Uh, back the first time I did this, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but uh, it's looking good. Now I'm going to start fitting some flares and uh, there were lots of talk about the flares and what I don't want on these is a like a, like a black strip of uh, like the, the rubber gasket going all the way over there like what a beetle has or whatever. I wanted it to be reasonably seamless, but I still wanna also protect the, uh, uh, the paint of the car. Okay, obviously the front end has the paint protection film on it, the back end doesn't. Um, but uh, what I'm gonna use is I'm gonna actually go over it with the double-sided trim tape. So this stuff is actually the stuff you use if you see a car that's got the, um, like a chrome molding or uh, badges and things like that. This is the same sort of stuff. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a strip of it along the edge, on the inner edge, top edge of these um, wheel arch flares. So it will help adhere the flare to the car, but uh, also create that sort of little bit of, just a tiny buffer between the flare and the body. And um, yeah, and then we can bolt them on. So let's, uh, let's put the tape on and start bolting on some flares. I'm looking forward to having flares on this thing. Oh, it's looking good. I am very happy with the flares. I think that's looking great. I just wanted to set back and uh, and see what it all looked like together with the engine and take some uh, nice Instagram pictures. But um, yes, the flares are on. They're looking good. There's a, there is a bunch of little uh, water bubbles and stuff in them that uh, I'm just gonna leave and they should bleed out. And uh, if they don't, you can actually go through and um, prick them with the tip of a razor blade and uh, the uh, the air and water can seep out and uh, it'll actually uh, self-heal and they're, 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 the, the 
Pain protection film is actually really robust and really good at self-healing, so uh, that will look really good. So let's move on. Alright, so um, after I did the flares, as you've seen, I've started getting stuck in now to this rear end. And um, those who missed it, I converted this to a panhard rod. Uh, I went through the pros and cons of panhard rods and watts links and all the other things uh, back when I did it. And uh, you can go back and uh, have a look at that if you want to. Before any, uh, any comments come through because I know there's people who are going to say this is not going to handle the power and stuff like that. This is more than sturdy enough for the Ferrari engine. This uh, two litre um, LSD rear end that I have here is super strong. Um, I talked to a bunch of people who've had uh, turbo alphas and uh, booster swapped alphas and all sorts of stuff with heaps more torque than this Ferrari engine is going to do and you can't kill them. These things are rock solid so uh, I'm not concerned about that at all. This is going to do the job nicely but um, after uh, starting to clean it up I noticed that I haven't finished welding it. I did a bunch of tacks and stuff that I realised um, were going to be much easier to finish off out of the car than in the car, which is often the case. So um, before I uh, go through and do my final cleanup and paint it, I'm going to finish welding up the um, the pan hard rod. I also need to drill some more holes through this mount that um, basically this design is something that Colin Byrne drew up for his race car. And, um, and he uh, thankfully sent it through to me. And uh, uh, I need to drill some holes so I can get the handbrake cables through. So. Let's drill some holes, do some welding, and, uh, and then we can clean this thing up for paint. Well, uh, the rear end is done. I actually did, uh, I pulled out one of the axles, I checked the bearings, um, everything feels good, so I'm just running with it. Um, there's plenty of tread on the um, uh, on the brake drum shoes, so I, again, there's, there's, there's plenty left on them, so they're good. I do have new discs and, uh, and other things for them. Uh, as far as the diff goes, it's it's all looking good. Nothing was leaking. It's all it's all running well. So I can deal with that maintenance wise as it comes up. But uh, at this stage, uh, I'm happy to to run it as it as it is. Um, getting a few bits and pieces like a new handbrake cable and stuff like that. But it's uh, it's all looking good. This episode was a little bit disjointed because I was going backwards and forwards, organising bits and pieces, ordering things, and uh, and sort of trying to work on what I can tackle and obviously doing paint protection film which is something I've done previously doing it again does not make it too interesting so uh, I apologize for that but some of this stuff just needs to be done and it's just so time consuming but uh, we are getting there and uh, and inching closer and closer to getting that engine in so uh, looking forward to that but uh, I think it's time for uh, fun facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, the Ferrari F355 was produced from 1994 until 1999. It was a successor to the 348 and it was designed to compete with other high performance sports cars such as the Porsche 911, which we all know all about, and the Lamborghini Diablo. 
The F355 was introduced at the Geneva Motor Show in 1994 and it was available as a coupe, a spider and a targa. The car was powered by a 3.5 litre 5 valve V8 that was capable of producing 375 horsepower and was mated to a 6 speed manual transmission. In 1997, Ferrari introduced some new updates to the 355, including an improved interior and revised suspension. Or revised interior and improved suspension. There we go. It also received a power upgrade with the engine now producing 380 horsepower and received a new manual automated transmission called the F1. The Ferrari 355 was also noted for being the first Ferrari to be fitted with stability control. This system was later adopted by many car makers and has become a standard safety feature in vehicles. Production of the Ferrari F355 ended in 1999 with a total of 11,273 units being produced in its five year run. Today the Ferrari 355 is considered to be one of the most beautiful and collectible of the modern Ferraris. All right, well, I am at least very happy with the flares on. It's, uh, it's looking good and I am ticking a lot of these little things off. I know it doesn't, again, it doesn't really feel like I got a lot done, but I did. I spent a lot of time in this garage today. I spent three whole days and it doesn't feel you like I did three whole days today. We're spending well, lots of time. Most of, yeah, not, not today, but over the last what? few days. Yeah. <laughs> so... It's a slow process, as you know. Like, subscribe, let Jeff know what you think, you know about Patreon and all of that. And um, yeah, we'll see you again soon. We'll see you next week. See you guys. Bye guys. New transmission, improved suspension, an updated interior and a improved transmission. No, new improvements to the F35, F355. If it'll, uh, now being able to stability control and an improved interior and revised suspension or revised interior and improved suspension there we go <laughs> <laughs>